ready to start your packaged food business and you're wondering about pricing and making, you want to be sure that you actually price your product for profitability. For the best packaged food business advice, make sure you subscribe to this channel, the Food Business Success channel. Uh, click on the bell and you will be notified when I release new videos all on the topics of starting a food business, a packaged food business, and making sure that you start a profitable food business and not an expensive hobby. I know you make something really delicious and all of your friends and family tell you that you should turn this into a food business. So you're starting to think about that and you're, you're in, you wanted to go ahead and do it. But I will tell you that you want to avoid some mistakes that I see many of my clients make around pricing their product. Watch this video to the end to get my four mistakes that I see packaged food business entrepreneurs make when pricing their product, which can lead to starting an expensive hobby and not a profitable food business. I'm Sari Kimball. I'm the creator of Food Business Success, and I have literally helped hundreds of food business entrepreneurs start and grow a profitable packaged food or drink business. Comment below and let me know what kind of food business or drink business you are thinking about starting. I love to hear what people are doing. Uh, you guys are so creative and have so many delicious ideas. So before we get into pricing, the first thing that you do need to know is what type of food business you're starting. So I do have a video all about the different types of food businesses, whether it's cottage food or um, a product that you can make out of your home, whether it's direct to consumer license or a wholesale license or some combination of those things. So make sure you watch that video before this one or after it, um, cause that'll help you determine um, your pricing a little bit better. All right. So mistake number one is not understanding what cost of goods sold is or what is included and how to do it correctly. So cost of goods sold, or as it is commonly referred to as COGS, uh, abbreviated, is four things. So cost of goods sold includes your food ingredients, so everything that it takes to make the actual product all the way down to the salt. Um, and then it includes your packages. So anything packaging related that you need to hold your product. So I'm not talking about packaging like shipping materials, but packaging like um, the container that's going to hold the product, the twist tie, the label, the seal, anything that goes that needs to contain and go around the product so that you have something to give to someone. The other two components are around labor. And so you have your active time to make the product itself. So if you have a baked good, for instance, it would be the time that it takes to put everything together, to mix it, to form it, to shape it, and get it in the oven, but it's not the time while it's sitting in the oven because that is time you could be doing something else. So it's active time. And then it is active time to package the product. So that is, um, if again, I guess if it's a baked good that you are um, putting it in the actual, the bag, you're putting the twist tie on it, you're putting the label on it, maybe there's two labels, um, whatever time that, you, that it takes for you to actually package that product. Now, I know a lot of early startup companies tell me, well, I'm not paying anybody uh, to, do my, to do this labor, right? You're doing it essentially for free for yourself, you're starting your business. But it's really, really important um, to include labor. And so that is definitely, I would say, mistake number two is that you are not including accurate labor in your cost of goods sold. So ultimately, if, it, if you're just a solopreneur, it's going to come out somewhere. Um, I realize you're not writing yourself a check 
uh, for that labor. However, as you grow, uh, you may want to hire somebody and hopefully you do. But let's just say uh, <laughs> that something happens to you. Um, what would it cost you to pay somebody else to actually make or package that product? So I at least recommend going with minimum wage. Um, I usually put in $12 an hour for, for the models that I do. Um, but you need to factor that into your cost of goods sold early on. And so that's definitely a mistake that I see people not do and it ends up messing up um, as we get into the next few mistakes, it messes up their price parity and they are not able to make a profit um, as, you, as you grow and scale. All right, so mistake number three is not understanding all of the overhead expenses that are going to go into your business. So uh, a lot of times people wanna factor in like kitchen time or market fees or something like that into their cost of goods sold but that is not how you do it. So you need to have your cost of goods sold. So let's say we are making cookies and um, each cookie costs us 65 cents, something like that. So that is our cost of goods sold. That is the ingredients, it is the packaging, it's the labor to make the cookie, and it is the labor to put the cookie in the package. So, uh, that is how, that is all that is in your cost of goods sold. So then we're gonna start adding on margins so that we can make a profit, okay? But don't take out your kitchen costs or any other costs before you start doing your profit. And I'm gonna walk you through this just a little bit more and I'm gonna just give you a, a little snapshot of um, the tool that I use with my clients so you can see this demonstrated just a little bit more. I do have a great video on uh, how much this is going to cost you and I talk about some of those expenses that you need to consider when you're first starting your business. Um, so be aware of those overhead expenses and have a good estimate as you're going into your business. So related to understanding your overhead uh, or not understanding your overhead costs is really about not understanding how much of this product you need to make in order to break even uh, at the very least and hopefully make a profit. So um, it's kind of mistake 3A, we'll call it. Uh, it's part of mistake three, um, but you really need to understand how many of these cookies do I need to actually sell in order to cover all of my overhead expenses. So that's gonna lead me into mistake number four, which is probably the biggest mistake that I see um, my clients make when they're just starting out, is they don't understand how to price through distribution and have price parity. So if you're just starting out, uh, you're probably, you may not even understand exactly what I mean by that. But let me take you through a scenario. So let's say we're making um, these cookies and we're gonna sell them in, in packages of four. So let's say our cost of goods sold is $2. I'm just gonna make my numbers really easy for you. Um, so uh, $2 and that includes the packaging and everything that goes into these four cookies. So let's say you're selling direct to a consumer at a farmer's market. Um, typically, people feel really good when they do a 50% margin, which means I'm going to double that price. So uh, I'm going to charge my consumer $4 uh, for those four cookies, and um, basically I get a $2 profit, and the other $2 goes to pay for my cost of goods sold. So you're thinking like, that's pretty great. Like I'm making a 50% margin. So you go down and you look at your break even analysis and you say, okay, I need to sell, you know, a hundred of these um, bags of cookies per month to make $400 and to then be able to pay for my kitchen costs and um, market fees and some marketing and my business licenses and my insurance and all of these things. So you gotta really like, it's just numbers. How many of these do I need to sell in order to be profitable? 
So when we start getting into, so that's easy, right? Direct to consumer, farmers markets, e-commerce. Um, but many of you are, may want to consider going into wholesale and maybe even becoming kind of a, a medium to large scale brand. So it, there's kind of three different places. So we have direct to consumer, then you have self-distribution. These are kind of the steps that I see most uh, food brands go through. Self-distribution, where you are selling your product into um, retail stores and you're distributing the product yourself. And then um, hooking up later with a distributor. So that distributor is um, handling all of the distribution and the sales and the invoicing. So what happens is people just price early on for direct to consumer which makes sense because you're thinking just kind of short term. But when you start pricing for uh, self-distribution and then distribution um, with someone else, the problem is, is that your profit margin shrinks considerably. So I will just tell you that, um, so let's, you know, a grocery store, if you're selling into like a, a co-op or something like that, um, they need to get a certain margin on that product as well. So typically I see about a 35 to 40% margin. So let's say that uh, the store that you're selling into needs a 35% margin. Your uh, four to, what you would have sold the cookies for to farmer's market is $4. And my math's not gonna be perfect on this because I didn't do the math ahead of time. Uh, but roughly, let's say now you can only sell, you're gonna have to sell these cookies to the grocery store for let's say $3.10. So now instead of making $2 uh, profit margin, you're gonna make $1.10. But you're making up for it in quantity, hopefully. So uh, you're, you're now focusing on a quantity relationship instead of a quality one-on-one -on -one relationship. So that grocery store is gonna have access to a lot more potential customers, so hopefully you're selling more of those cookies. So instead of 100 cookies a month, now you're selling 100 packages of cookies per week. So, uh, the problem, so when I talk about price parity, the cookies need to sell for $4 at the farmer's market and they need to sell for $4 at the grocery store. No grocery store or any store is gonna want to have you selling your cookies for less than what you're suggesting that they sell them for. Now, it's always their prerogative if they wanna raise the price, but when you go in, your suggested retail price needs to be the same as what you're selling it for at a farmer's market. So if it's $4, then your suggested retail price is $4. Now, the, the next problem, part of this mistake, is not going through all the way through distribution. So the retailer takes their 35%. Now you're gonna add on a distributor and they're gonna take a minimum, I would say 20%, all the way as much as 30%. So uh, when you take into that account, you might be making 50 cents or less. I even see sometimes where the math works out to you know five cents. Um, per product that you sell, per, per bag of cookies that you sell into distribution. So this is a problem, and so it can be solved two ways. Uh, one, as you scale up, your cost of goods sold will get more efficient. So you can buy your ingredients in bulk. Maybe you can buy them at a wholesale price. Uh, you can buy larger quantities of labels and packaging, so you're getting a better price per unit on your ingredients and packaging. Your labor efficiencies can also get much more efficient when you're making larger batches and you're using large equipment. So all of that, your cost of goods sold can improve as you scale up. But the other way you solve it is by making sure that you do some of these models um, through my tool that I offer um, in these various scenarios and just making sure that you do price that product correctly right from the start because nobody likes it when you have to go raise your prices. Your customers do not like it when you raise your prices. So it's better to come out of the gate um, with a, a little bit higher price point so that you have planned through distribution. 
you can always give your farmers market customers um, some discounts like uh, buy you know buy two get one free or a punch card or buy two for less um, you know less dollar amounts so you can encourage some quantity sales as well um, but you do want to be sure that that price parity is all the way through that it's four dollars four dollars four dollars so I hope that makes sense um, I know I'm kind of throwing around some big terms like gross margin and price parity and wholesale and distribution so I do want to offer that I am very excited to have just released my course on pricing for profitability. So if you really want to get this right, um, which you have to get it right to set up your business for success, um, I give you the in-depth uh, video on walk you through how to use my tool, how to do it correctly, making sure that your, um, it, your recipes are fine-tuned for scaling up and for um, being in production. And then I give you my tool, which is worth its weight in gold, um, to set you up through this pricing model and make sure you understand both the uh, gross margins that um, each of those uh, categories take and also that break-even analysis. I also give you um, some estimates around your overhead expenses and a tool to help kind of build that in right from the beginning so that you know how many of these cookies you need to make and to sell in order to be profitable at each stage of scaling up. So what other questions do you have for me about pricing your product? I know that was a lot. Um, so I'd love to hear your questions about how to price things correctly. Are you ready to start that food business? Get your free business checklist below and let's get you started off on the right foot and help you avoid some of these mistakes around starting a food business so that you can start a profitable business. Also, if you want to join a community of food business entrepreneurs, and get access to expertise um, through me, uh, I invite you to join my monthly coaching membership through Food Business Success, and that link is foodbizsuccess.com. You get two live Q&A calls uh, each month, and I also give you a resource of the month um, that'll really, as you build up your library, uh, it'll really help you to set yourself up for success. So don't go it alone. Have an expert in your back pocket through this very affordable monthly coaching program. And finally, if you like this video, please like it. Please share it with others. Subscribe to this channel and leave me a comment and let me know uh, what type of food business you're starting or what other topics you would like to see future videos on.